What's up everybody? Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be getting in some new Freedom Breeder racks. So as you can see, the wall behind me is a clean slate. I just put a nice fresh coat of paint on it. I got my old racks out and the new racks are coming in. I want to show you guys the whole process from offloading them from the trucks to setting them up. And then by the end of this video, we'll have a new backdrop, which are going to be the new racks that I just got in from Freedom Breeder. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good video. I think my wife is going to edit this video so she may kind of put all kinds of random clips, me offloading them and all that other stuff. But I want to take you through a handful of the racks. I cannot take you through every rack. I have too many of them. But I want to show you some models and I'll tell you kind of what I like about them. I just got in my new models. I have some older ones and we can kind of show the evolution of Freedom Breeder in itself. So I'm going to flip the camera and we're going to take a deeper dive at this. This is Jason's wife talking, and I just wanted to come out here while he was cleaning snakes, but the Freedom Breeder racks, I'm trying to get a good picture. I apologize for the shakiness. I'm not a professional camera person, but the Freedom Breeder racks have arrived, and I'm sure he's gonna show more footage of him maybe assembling it and prepping them for the snakes, but yeah, they came, so that's exciting. My wife already took you around, showed you some of the racks, we're in my garage, I got the I think it's called the 664 and I have the 1075 baby racks, adult racks. Here behind me, I'm gonna show you, take a better look. I'm holding the camera by hand. It's gonna be shaky, but then we're gonna start pulling them downstairs. I do have some older Freedom Breeder racks that I need to pull out. Uh, so it's gonna be somewhat of a piecewise process. I'm not gonna put them all in today, but I do have my guys here. They're gonna help me clean, or they are helping me clean. They're just finishing up a couple racks. I'm gonna bring down some of the bins, but I will flip the camera, we'll take a better look. I know my wife already took you around. We'll take a better look at each bin, and show you what I got going on. Then I'll show you when they're all set up because I think the process of moving them and setting them up is gonna to be too much to document, especially since it's like 90 something degrees out. I'm sweating, uh, just finished cleaning some stuff, so we'll see where this goes. So we're gonna just take a more detailed look at what I got going on. These are the baby racks. Can't remember how many levels I ordered, but I think it's uh, 10 or 11 levels. So that'll give me, I think, 100 or so babies. Uh, no, it's more than 10, because I think I have 100 or 90 baby slots. So maybe it's 14 levels. We'll see once it's all set up. I did order them with the deli cup holders for the babies. I like these a lot. The bin has it in there. This is perfect for most baby snakes. Uh, boas, it usually lasts them six months to a year. So I really like those over the typical PVC racks. They're all stainless steel. And one thing I did notice is these new racks have these plastic clips. I don't know if I actually like them, but again, we'll see them when they're all set up. I prefer the stainless steel. I can't imagine the stainless steel is that much more expensive. So I'm kind of disappointed that things are starting to go more plastic than stainless steel, but it is what it is. These adult racks do have the stainless steel on them on both ends. And what this does is it holds the ventilation clips or these ventilation slots. 
Uh, let's kind of take a step back. So they do have the windows on them. I ordered seven highs. So there's 14 of these, all stainless steel. I like the stainless steel much better. Uh, I have the heat panels on there. I got them all with insulation, which is something that I don't typically do, but uh, I wanted to try it. Nice new bin. I think these are 48 wide or so. Maybe they're 50 by 30, something like that. Really good for the four foot boas, or should say for adult boas. There's my other rack. Again, you're not really seeing much other than what I have, but once they're all set up, I will take another video. Let's go start moving them down. Hello. What are you guys doing? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Cleaning day. All, all right. right, no swears. Did you set up the Freedom Breeder Racks yet? You're all on YouTube. Oh boy. You're all on YouTube. Did yeah. you? Did you set up the Freedom Breeder Racks yet? Not no, yet. No, we're getting there. We did. Okay. We did some of them. So we'll include this in the that video. Yes. Oh, you did set them up. Okay. Yeah, so new baby racks are moving stuff up. Uh, I got some going in here. I could need a bigger ladder to get those. We have some adults in these. It looks good. Yeah, we got to do a more when when the room's empty. We would do a more in depth. Yeah, when they're look all set them, up. Because you're selling some of them too, right? Yes, the old racks. They're not in the room right now. Okay. I moved them out. So I think I want. I think you should do a giveaway. A giveaway. Yeah. What do you want me to give away, Zach? What should I give away? A temp gun. Temp gun. Oh, <laughs> well, that's a good that. one. That's a good idea. Temp gun. I don't know. Yeah, I could do a temp gun. I, it's something everyone should have. Yeah. Let's do a T-shirt too. A temp gun and a T-shirt. Yeah. I, I don't know so. how many. Oh, yeah, I don't have any hoodies, Joe. Gotta go. A temp gun and a T-shirt. Well, okay. what kind of? Uh, so, what size do you have? I know you're I running I low. Have, I think I have XL. I have like one XL T-shirt. So, if you want an XL T-shirt or a temp gun, comment in the video below or comment in the comment section below. First name, last initial, city and state you're in, yeah. and why you like these videos. Or give me a new video topic. Best topic that I like will win. Uh, or I might just do a random comment generator. Uh, I will not reach out to you, so I'll announce the winner in my next video. Yeah. You need to send me an email that you are the one, and I'm gonna ask for a picture of your license so I know that it's actually you who won. Also, we have Zach, we have Greg, and we have Nick. <laughs> all right. They're awesome. It sounds good. All right, I'll see you back with the, when the Freedom Breeder racks are all set up. Yes. All right, okay, bye. <laughs> The first rack we're gonna take a look at is my Freedom Breeder baby rack, or at least what I use for babies and hatchlings. So this is the FB71075, I believe, or the 1075 rack. You'll have to look it up on the website. I do believe it is the 1075, and I think why they call it that is these are the FB10 bins, and they are 75 of them that come with the base model. Now, I did get extra levels, so I think this has 85, and it goes as high as I could fit it within my room. As you can see, it's somewhat empty at this point, but that's filling up, and I have an old rack that's in its place. So I really like this bin. I got them with the cup holders in it, and all of my Freedom Breeder racks I have with 50% ventilation. That's a question I get often, is what ventilation I should use for it, and 50% is the ventilation style that I use. I tend to like that style because it, my room, it's just enough if I have bedding in it, but still allows proper airflow. Now, if you do not have a room like myself, you may want to get 25% ventilation. That's something that you really need to figure out for yourself. What I was trying to do here is, this is the new clip style they have, and what this does is this pops off and this liner pops out. Uh, it is a little clumsy, you know, this is one of the things that I don't like about it is once you pull it out just a little bit, it's hard to get into that back groove again. So I do notice the new styles are getting better, but they're still not perfect. I don't know how to clip this thing back on, but we'll get it back on. That's something I'll do when we're maybe off film here. Um, they're, they're not perfect, but it is nice that you can pull this whole thing apart. So if you have an animal that's sick or you need to disinfect, I can pull this whole thing out. I can disinfect the bin. I can disinfect the top of it that has the slots in here. Let me see if I can pull this bin out so you can see what I'm talking about. So there is the 50% ventilation. There's my heat panel in the back or my heat tape, whatever it is. I did get the insulated panels this time. I've never received them in the past, or I should say I've never purchased them in the past. And so far, I really like them. I kind of wish I just paid the extra money for the insulated panels. Uh, this again, FB10 with the cup holder. Let's look at a different one now. So this right here is what I would call my 
hold back, raise up rack. So this is a kind of look at this guy here. This is the FB, I think it's the 1040. Again, why they call it that, I don't know if the bin size is 10, but this one does hold 40 tubs. Uh, it's a really good size rack. I like it because it's, I believe, 33 inches deep, and I think it's probably about 10 or 15 inches wide, 12 inches wide. Freedom Breeder has the specs on their website, but I really like this size. I think it's a really good uh, size for most snakes to raise up, and it probably lasts most boas somewhere around the first year to year and a half, depending on male or female. This is a 2021, and she has plenty of room in there. Granted, she is a leopard boa, and it's a dwarf species, but um, I did get these with the cup holders again. This is last year's model, and you'll notice, or maybe it was a year and a half ago or so, you'll notice this has metal clips. This one over here has plastic clips, I much prefer the metal clips. I'm a little disappointed Freedom Breeder got cheap and they didn't have that as the base option anymore. But I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to cut costs and they are trying to make the racks more attainable. Prices and materials have gone up and if they put metal clips on them, that also goes up. Now with that said, this is again, this is an older one. So that one, the baby rack is the one that I just got. These are ones that I've had for a little bit. I think these are two or three years old. They came standard with the metal clips. You can up buy or you can buy up the plastic to the metal clips if you want. I do not have the cup holders in here. These are a little bit wider. These racks here, these two, this one and that one are the same size. So as you can see, this has four bins. This has three bins. I like this older size. I honestly, I don't really like these as much. I believe these are the 1027. The, again, stock model, they come, I think, with 27 bins in them. And this is their FB80 size tub, I believe. There's their FB70, which is like your typical ball python rack. There's the FB80, which is this one. It's uh, essentially the same size as a FB70 or a or CB70, but it has a little bit more height. I think these are about seven or eight inches tall. Maybe it's seven and a half inches. So I really... I did not like these as much as their old style. What the old style had was they came straight down. So because it came straight down on both sides, there was a couple extra inches of floor space and it really made a big difference. They were also a little bit taller. They were nine inches taller. I would rather them be nine inches because it really seemed like the snake could last in there a little bit longer. So let's kind of keep moving. There's another one of those. This is the FB90. I love this FB90 size. It is two bins across. It's, I believe, 30 inches wide or 27 or so inches wide by 33 inches deep. I think it's really good for most male adult boas, except for when they get a little bit larger. Most of my raise up and juvenile females and all of these racks, they do fit on top of each other, at least these style here. The baby rack does not. It's, I think, 18 inches deep and these are 33 inches. Again, Freedom Breeders website will have all the specs. All of them have the 50% ventilation. Uh, their ventilation did get better over time, but I do really like this style rack. One of my gripes is that these are older. So these are probably five to six years old and they built this beautiful rack, but they put in, you know, a fraction of a penny rivets to hold the glass in. So all the rivets are rusting. Uh, you know, I'm a little disappointed. You spend $3,000 on a rack and your rivets start rusting out. It's because they cheaped out on the rivets. So it's to me, again, I wish they just spent more money on their rivets. Uh, but instead I told them and they sent me a box of rivets. I'm like, all right, what am I going to do with this? Drill them out and put new rivets in. So, and spend, you know, $300 on a rivet tool that I'm not going to do. So in the meantime, my rivets are rusting out. The newer models, which I want to show you like these, they, I don't know what's behind these. I think these are plastic rivets. So it is an upgrade. And that's one thing that I will say is Freedom Breeder does tend to constantly be upgrading their stuff. Uh, but at the same time, again, there's always some flaws, some imperfections. Uh, sometimes their welds are really sharp, so you can cut yourself on some of these because it hasn't been polished up. But again, it's, me it's machined and manufactured really well. And I can't say too much bad about it other than some minor stuff. Uh, again, I do wish the, my biggest gripe was the rivets on this one. I haven't found any issues with the newer ones yet. I have found that the newer ones tend to have this gap here that the older ones like these did not have or it seems like it's not as significant and what i've noticed is the snakes tend to follow that gap and 
really damaged their nose. That never happened on the older ones. It happens on every one of my newer ones and I don't know why. Something happened with their manufacturing process when they changed from the old style, which was these with the metal rivets, to the new style with these plastic rivets that they tend to rub and do that. So let's look at some of the adult racks. These are the new style adult racks. So right here are some of my older ones. You can see they still are in decent shape. These are old. They're, no, they're not stainless steel. They're just powder coated steel. They rust and all that other stuff. So the stainless steel I do think is a big upgrade. However, the stainless Stainless steel seems to be cheaper. Talking about the new and the old style, the racks I got six or seven years ago don't rust. The racks that I got a couple years ago, they tend to get rust spots on them, and stainless steel shouldn't have rust spots. But with all that said, they are the best rack that I've seen. I've seen a lot of racks out there, and I still buy Freedom Breeder for a reason. These do have the metal clips, which I'm very happy about, and the ventilation on here. I gotta be honest, I what they did with this for 50% ventilation is this side has the vents and this side has no vents. I would have much preferred if they did it so that like all the other racks where the ventilation was in the front and then the non-ventilation was in the back or vice versa. I don't really like that one size has vents and one side doesn't. I, I guess we'll give it a chance and see how it goes. I do have the heat panels here and I noticed that they are really really good i like them a lot these are the 10 or excuse me these are the 664s that um, six levels four feet wide they also have the 666s which the new style looks just like these white ones but they're six feet long like those over there i have the old style the bin in here is smaller than these let's see if i can pull this bin open i can't I couldn't pull that one because they're getting old. But the bin does seem to be smaller. This one seems to have much more space in it than this one here. And it's just the design of the bin itself. Like I said, if you look at the corners, those corners went straight down and these come in at an angle. They come in at an angle on all sides, including the front and the back. So with all that, that is something I do not like about the newer ones. But it is what it is and that's what we're working with. Back looking at me. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Now, I, again, I have seen pretty much every rack and cage that has ever been made. Obviously, some of the smaller manufacturers I may have may have not seen. For the price and the value, I still think Freedom Breeder is very expensive, but they are worth it, which is why I purchased them. If I could get a better quality or a better value elsewhere, I certainly would because I don't have billions of dollars to be spending on caging and I know you guys don't either, at least I assume you guys don't either. So cost is certainly a factor, but they function really well. They're designed really well. Their lead time is terrible. You have to wait a long time for them, but they always show up. It's, I mean, unlike some of these other cage companies, how many cage companies have gone out of business that just happened, I think, with Herptastic. They took orders for like a year and then they went bankrupt after they didn't deliver any orders. And they said, if you want your money back, contact the lawyer. Uh, you're gonna spend more money in the lawyer than you are gonna get your four or $500. And honestly, I've seen people rebuild. They've used the Freedom Breeder tubs and they've rebuilt them with PVC cages. You're spending just as much money. In my opinion, just buy the Freedom Breeder. Now, depending on where you are, the freight is rough. I mean, my freight cost pretty much the same cost as if I would have just bought a brand new rack. So the freight is expensive, but you're getting quality products. As you can see, I have racks here that are 30 something, you know, probably 20 or 30 years old, and they're still here, they're still in use, and they're still going to be here for a long time. So that is why I continue to use Freedom Breeder. They're the best in the business, in my opinion. They're not a sponsor because they're not paying me, I should say. I got zero off these racks. Or I lie, I maybe got like $100 off the racks because I was buying some other stuff with it. But I'm not getting discounts. They're not paying me. Um, it's just me. I like Freedom Breeder and we work together a lot. So I'm going to be honest. I told you what I didn't like about them. I'm not going to lie to you guys. That My integrity is worth more than anybody sponsoring a channel. So with all that said, you know I, I do hope you guys can trust my review on this. Uh, they're the ones that I like. I like Freedom Breeder. Their heat panels are great. Their ventilation is great. They've just continued to improve. Every model that I see gets better and better, except for some of the quality issues. Like I mentioned, materials are getting expensive and they're trying to reduce costs. As people say, I don't want to spend three, four thousand dollars on a rack. 
that's what happens. When you don't want to spend the money on the rack, you try to bring those costs down by using cheaper materials. I mean, if these were $7,000 racks, then probably nobody would be buying them because there are less expensive options. So they need to stay competitive. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention with the material costs, I forgot what I was gonna mention. Okay, I remember what I was gonna mention. So one other thing I was gonna talk about is they do have what's called the Proline series and those come completely unassembled. Uh, they were kind of saying, hey, why don't you get the Proline series? It's cheaper. But honestly, when you actually add up the levels and you add up everything else, it's only like 200 or $300 cheaper, but you are putting them together yourselves. I mean, not just stacking these shelves, how these go together is, each one of these levels comes just like this with the bins usually in them are all stacked up for shipping and then you just kind of put the put them together it takes probably five minutes less time if you have two people the proline racks come like an ikea bureau and if you are not wanting to assemble uh do not do that you're gonna spend your time doing and assembling and i get why they're doing it or at least I can imagine. One, its cost is gonna be lower. Two, is they can probably keep them in stock because they're not assembling them. There's no space required. It's, you know, here's your box of rivets. Here's your box of, of shelves. Here's your, you know, connecting panels. It's just keep it all in, fill the order and ship it out. So it's probably easier to fill those because there's no labor and welding involved. But at the same time, I still don't feel like that's a better quality rack and for the money I'm saving if it were half the price a quarter of the price maybe I'd do it but we're only talking like a small percentage like five percent ten percent cheaper which again in the big picture what is your time worth are you what happens when you put the rivet in wrong what happens when you have this thing all assembled and you have 20 pieces still clearly it wasn't assembled correctly so I would rather pay Freedom Breeder to do it the right way, assemble it all, weld it all, gives me five minutes. Otherwise, these racks would still be sitting in the corner not set up yet. So if that's your thing, if you like getting hands-on, if you have an air rivet gun and you're good with stuff and good with building and you have the time, then maybe you want to save yourself a couple hundred dollars and go for that rack. Me personally, I don't like it. I will never buy it. Uh, if that's you, go for it. And I'm not bashing Freedom Breeder again. I know why they're doing this. It's just totally not my thing. I am not setting up racks myself using rivet guns and all that stuff. I would like to see them do a whole video just on how to set up those racks without the air rivet gun. You know, have just some random person, have me come out, ship me a rack and have me set it up and really film how long it takes. I think it took Jesse, the owner of Freedom Breeder, like 45 minutes or a couple hours to set this up with an air rivet and he does this for a living. So if it, let's say it did take only 45 minutes, if it took him 45 minutes, it's gonna take me like a month. So I don't know what it's supposed to look like. So it's like, I have no picture. I just saw, okay, this maybe goes this way, maybe it goes that way. The other thing is that the pieces are more plastic, so it's less less metal, more plastic. So overall, I don't think it's really that big of a deal, um, and I don't want to participate in that. I just want a nice rack shipped to me. I want to stack it up, and we're in good shape. But if that's your deal, go for it. So with all that said, hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully Freedom Breeder doesn't get too pissed off with me, but at the end of the day, I want to give my honest reviews on what I'm receiving, and it is what it is. That's why you guys, I hope, can trust what I'm saying is... One, it is my opinion, but two, it is an unbiased opinion. I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the great. So with all that said, until next week, please check out my website if you're looking for any cool snakes. I have some awesome stuff that I just put out. Check out my Patreon if you have general questions or you just want to get into a community of people who are like-minded talking about reptiles. And until then, make sure you like this video, comment, subscribe, and give it a thumbs up, and we'll catch you next week. Keep it moving.